Lisa was trying to give thanks to everybody. She really deserved a lot of things.
my tenant wasn't paying the rent. Um, so by this time, I had moved to, Cal moved to Utah. And so like, I had to serve this, my tenant a three-day notice like 20 times over the course of a three-year period. I wasn't living in California, so I had to pay a server $50 every time I had wanted to serve that notice. So every time he didn't pay the rent, not only did I get the rent, I had to pay another $50 to try to collect on the rent. And then he fought, that guy, that tenant finally moved out, and he sued me for not, um, not returning the full security deposit. So he sued me for $500. So I had, you know, I, I had to sue me in small claims court. I could go defend myself because I, I did, I was very honest on the on the security deposit. He owed me $500, but I had, I, the plane ticket alone would cost me $250 to go out there. Let alone where am I going to sleep and rent a car and all this stuff. So, a lot of $500 gone. <laughs> um, it's just suddenly, um, you know, the challenges of. Of, uh, of owning out of state was <laughs> not that great. Was, uh, there's my money just flying away. So I sort of just went back to my job. I'm earning thirty-three thousand dollars a year now, <laughs> um, and just thought I'd play well for the lost. Those um, each of those houses were plummeting in value every every week, every year. So um, I moved to Utah. This house is the best investment I ever made. I kind of got back to the basics. Um, I was able to purchase this house subject to the existing finance. Nice basic house in West Valley. I was making, I like the house, deep, real decent neighborhood. I plan on owning it for a long time, 550 bucks a month. Positive cash. I rented it to one of my workers. I did. Um, and uh, I, it, this thing is great. I just love it. I paid $1,000 for this house. And I make 550 bucks a month of positive cash flow. I paid full price for what it was worth, but subject to doesn't appear on my credit report. I, I love this house. I can't get enough of it. I'm feeling good again. You know, I'm not getting rich. I'm not my net worth isn't booming, but I'm just feeling good. Like, okay. You know, previously when I had um, when I was looking at houses, I focused a little too much on long-term appreciation. Now I still believe that to be important, but I forgot, I neglected to really focus on cash flow. I believe in long-term appreciation being super important, but cash flow is crucial. If you don't have cash flow, when things go bad, man, it hurts, it hurts. Um, so, feeling good again. <laughs> I, uh, I, you know, just getting back to the basics, I'm not getting rich, but just, Slowly, things are going well. I bought recently bought another house in Kearns. Just things are it's just perfect. Got people moved in, um, and, and things are going well. Now, don't get me wrong. I have small problems <coughs> with my rentals here in Utah, also, but they're just so much more manageable when I'm here locally. Within the past year, I've had a hot water heater go out in both Utah and out of state. When it went out in Utah, I drove to Home Depot, bought a hot water heater. I hired my handyman, I paid him $180, installed it, and it was done. It was easy. But when the hot water heater goes out out of state, I have to either just call a plumber or rely on a property manager to hire somebody, and it cost me $1,100 to replace the hot water heater. Almost double the cost for the exact same thing. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a very bold, very cocky statement. I am the greatest property manager ever to walk the face of the earth. <laughs> when it comes to my properties. If you, you know, property managers charge approximately 10% for a single family home, so if the rent's a thousand bucks, that guy's making a hundred dollars a month. I guarantee you, I care a lot more than that guy about my house. I, I, I will do whatever it takes to fill a vacancy. I'll drive out there at 10 o'clock at night. I'll mow the lawn. I, you know, I do whatever it takes. That property manager just doesn't care nearly as much as me. Um, when I was investing out of state, I was relying upon other people's advice and opinions and information, where now I rely on myself. Um, some people have been very valuable to me, helped me get started. Randall, especially, has really been good to me. Um, 
that, and I've realized when I was relying on other people, like previously when I was buying out of state, I was really relying on the real estate agent for information. But that real estate agent is just a salesman, and he's incentivized when I buy. He doesn't care as much as me about my family and my bottom line and my net worth. So I just learned to rely on myself when I'm investing locally. I can get my hands on it. I can deal with it personally. It's just, it's just such a. I just am so much more comfortable when I'm here. I can drive out to the to the house and solve problems. Um, so I, I'm feeling good again. I, I just really believe in investing locally, um, especially right now. I really believe right now is a sweet spot to invest in Utah. If you look at that chart right there, that shows the appreciation rate for the state of Utah for the past 55 years. Four years in a row, prices have gone down. That means houses are on sale. They're cheap. But now is a great time to buy because prices are low. Um, number, reason number two, why now is a good time to buy? Appreciation is coming. I, I think it is coming this year. I think supply is down, demand is up. I, um, Jobs, number one reason why real estate will increase in value is jobs. Uh, Utah's unemployment rate is 5.8%. We have the fourth highest growth rate in the United States. Um, Utah's demographics are very appealing to, to real estate growth. We're, um, you know, it's a very young state, lots of babies, lots of young people buying houses. I, I believe there's a lot of pent up demand. I think there's been a lot of uncertainty uh, in the real estate market over the past seven years. and, and um, and I think that people believe the economy is improving. People believe that things are going the right way. Uh, there's improving consumer confidence, low interest rates. Uh, there's just a lot of reasons why I believe appreciation is coming this year. Uh, so rents are going up. Another great reason to buy now. Um, USA Today, uh, last month, printed this article. Apartments rents are going up. Three reasons they provided. Job growth, declining home ownership. The less people who own homes means the more people are going to be renting homes. Um, there's also not enough new construction going on. The, the population is growing, and there's more demand and more need for, for, uh, for housing, but there's not enough new units being built. Um, all the data I'm presenting here is very, very recent in the past one to two months. Um, this data is from a company called Marcus and Millichap. They're a huge real estate investment company. Um, they're showing the uh, the past, the top there, the top half shows the average rent nationally over the past three years, and you see it's just slowly going up, a little, little, five, approximately five percent per year. So just basic economics 101. Um, you know, as, as supply goes, a decrease in supply will cause prices to go up. Um, so this slide is the exact same thing as the previous slide, just showing the. Showing that the top half shows the previous three years is rent going up a little bit, five percent per year, and analysts are predicting a four to five percent increase in rent over the foreseeable future. So I just calculated those out: five, four percent increase per year over the next four years. By 2015, average rent nationally would be twelve hundred dollars a year. So just for fun, let's assume you bought a house today or this year in 2012, and let's assume that rents go up four percent per year for the next 30 years during a 30 year fixed rate. How much rent would you expect to receive at the end of 30 years? <laughs> <laughs> and per year? Per year? $42,000 a year. Um, so at the end of 30 years when your home was paid off, that's how much you'd be getting. How'd you like to have 10 of those paid off? How about 20? You know, would that help your retirement? And one more thing, if, you're, if your asking price on your rent is $3,500 a month, and you were having a hard time finding a tenant, you couldn't find somebody, you think you could lower the rent just a little bit? Try to, try to find somebody who's been there? Probably. This next slide is a really true fact. I read this in a magazine. Women prefer men who own their home. <laughs> so two Look at this guy. Look at that guy. So that is a fact. It's a statistical fact. Women prefer men who own their home. Now, 
um, imagine what women think about men who own more than one. <laughs> Last week, Warren Buffett was interviewed on CNN. There's his exact quotes right there. If I had a way of buying, if I had a way of buying a couple hundred thousand single-family home rentals, I would load up on them. I love this second part. I think that's probably as attractive an investment as you can make right now. Warren Buffett's a pretty smart guy. You don't have to buy a couple hundred thousand houses. Just buy a few, you, you will become very wealthy. Um, I just am really passionate about this. I really think right now is a sweet time to, to buy. Um, this is a basic, sort of boring slide up um, about the comparison between a 15-year and a 30-year. Um, if you have, if you can stomach a little bit higher payment, a 15-year alone is, is just getting paid off so much faster. I had a question, Pete. Can you, can you sell the financing house? Can you watch your stuff to the house? Yeah. How many years have the loan been in place? Oh, uh, unfortunately only like a like year and a half. But that's a year and a half closer to me getting $42,000 a year. So, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's it, if there's any questions or nothing. Um, thank you. Oh, yeah. Going up, that was a little house prices going 
always go up. You need to have a balance between cash flow and quality of house. So, so I think um, I would just make sure to have a balance between cash flow and neighborhood in the future. I think I need to cut it short here. Any one more question? <coughs> Rachel? Do you have HOA, but locally it wouldn't be as much of a problem because I could get out there and solve the problems. For the most part, I'd rather avoid an HOA just because they're a pain. They don't want me to hang a big for rent sign. They don't, they're just in my business. Just leave me alone. <laughs> they don't provide value. No. no. It's, it's not, there's no value in an HOA. Yeah. No. Just an extra expense. Yeah. One of the things I'd like to say about Pete here is, you know, Pete gave a great, great presentation. I've known Pete for a few years, but uh, is Pete is very honest. Most of the investors I know that have made money long term in this business 